I'm not really motivated to do this right now, but I know that I should probably give myself a haircut. Uh, it's still a bit damp because I just sprayed some water in it at the front. But uh, you can see my hair curls out from here, it comes outwards, and that's when I know it's too long. It has to get really quite long to uh, have the weight it needs to hang out of the way. I don't want it so short that I've got to make my hair at the front short because I think that it suits me better when I can sort of have the curtains. I told you I like the curtains. And uh, just getting rid of this buff and everything back here so that it conforms better to my head. Um, obviously, w when your hair is wet or weighed down by something, you have more control. Like people with straight hair, they don't have to really worry about this whole curling and buffing out stuff. But then again, they've got the problem if they wear a hairpiece of this whole join because it's hard to really disguise the join as well when you've got dead straight hair. So I have got an advantage there that it sort of springs up and matches in here. And also this is lace, French lace. So um, it, lace actually joins better at the uh, perimeter with your natural hair more than uh, poly does. But I pref still prefer poly, especially at the front where I've got to do the uh, front hairline touch-ups. So yeah, but lace is better back here. But overall, because this matters more and I've got to deal with this every four days, every 3.5 days, let's say, twice a week, um, I'd rather have poly for that reason. Because the front hairline is the most really important thing. The perimeter can sort of be disguised, even if you do have plastic back here. But you need some sort of length back there as well, so you can disguise it. For those of you who have a full topper, where the hair all just falls at the back, um, I don't know how you guys deal with that. You guys usually don't really give a shit about how well that lines up at the perimeter back there. You basically just feel it. I've told you, just get a tripod from Amazon or eBay that holds a phone or a camera of some sort and Wi-Fi beam it to an iPad, which you've got right here in front of you at your bathroom mirror. So you can see your own reflection and then you can also see the back of your own head and guide this camera back here around up higher than you and so on. So you don't want a short one where you've got to kneel so it can be higher than you. You want a seven foot tripod or whatever so it can go down and so you can see clearly back here exactly what's happening. Maybe you have the arm steering it on this side so you can aim it better towards the back of your own head without it falling over and all sorts of stuff. So just position it so you, the angles, your heels aren't kicking the tripod behind you. This saves you having to install some sort of something coming down from the ceiling, which would be kind of ideal unless you've got a drone, but then the blades would blast wind at air while you're trying to do it. And it would probably, probably take you longer than the drone has battery life. So. Drones are pretty cool, but um, yeah, a tripod's good enough, really. So we get a tripod so you can see the back of your own head and get a screen over here on this side. So I guess I'll wait for this to dry. Um, and I'll maybe hold my hairs like that and just use this thing to just shave those bits off to make it shorter. So that $55 wild extension from Osta or whatever, which is for dog clipping, uh, because it was recommended that I use dog clippers if I want to get more length, they get up to 2.5 inches long, which would allow me to have longer sort of hair, but I'm not sure what length that is right now. I don't really know. Seems to be longer than 2.5 inches. At any rate, I think I'll feel better if I at least trim my buffy hair. I don't know how short I want to make it. Like I said, I like the curtains. My hair isn't style, obviously, right now. But uh, because I've got such a curl in my hair, it goes short there and then it comes out and just sort of curls around that way and makes, any, even if I style my hair, it buffs out too much at the back. And it really does suit me more to have something that's conformed more to the head. There is a possibility I will make the hair short 
maybe just eyebrow length and just sort of make a short hairstyle at the front. But that depends on how clumsy I am with the cutting right now. $55 for that extension? No, nah, it's a waste of money. 2.5 inches or even just two inches is 50 millimeters. This one, the longest one I can put on the uh, Brio Beard Skeptrum is only 18 millimeters. That's the longest guard that comes with this device. I've had Wal as well. They only go up to 1.5 and they're really kind of big. The problem is that their hairs don't go up into them unless there's a vacuum cleaner. So you'd basically be, you'd basically be flattening the hairs down as you try to get them to come up into the moving razor blade. So it's better, I'm better off saving the money because I don't trust the guards just the way they are. If it's short enough, the hairs will stick up and be chopped. But if they're too long, they'll just flatten as you roll the razor, like I just said twice, okay? So I'm not gonna even put this on. I'm just going to start by trying to just chop that bit there, just as an approximation, okay? So this is the hairstyle before I begin. Should I say the hair length? Now let's see what happens. I'm not even gonna wet the hair. I just wanna see, let's see a dramatic change. I should be careful because I can't see what I'm doing at all. So basically I have to come in on my fingers. I thought this would be easier, but I feel like the further around the back of my head I go, the less control I have and the more risk I have of chunking out a big gap. Yeah, it's pretty awkward. Okay, so I'll leave all of this bit safe and until last. Probably should I, I should probably put a hat on. But I can't be bothered. I want to test out if that is 18 mils or not. If, if 18 mils turns out to be a lot shorter than that, then I won't be able to. Well, I reckon that's safe enough to do 18 mils. I think that's how much I've naturally been cutting it. So 2.5 inches is probably how long it is right now, I guess. So I'm just gonna go 18 around all of this. It's a good thing I didn't waste $55, huh? Last time I'll ever have a tuft of hair from my head that has no greys. I've started noticing about three or four greys coming in up here as well. A huge difference between that and that. But you see how that bit sticks out at the back? I don't know why, if that's all the same length, that decides to stick out. Maybe it's just the way my skull ends there and the neck puts the curvatures in there. I've been experiencing a lot of uh, scabs in my scalp lately. I'm pretty sure that was from the time that I went to Sydney and the temperature change was just, well, the humidity change was just so awful and I was just dying for air conditioning. So I've got flaky skin coming out of everywhere. It's just like 
I peeled through that, you'd see red in there, but I've got to make sure I have showers and wash it and take all the shampoo and condition it out thoroughly as well. Otherwise that can just sit on the scalp. I mean, I'd love to just shave it bald and just attack the alopecia or whatever the hell it is. Okay, so clearly this no longer matches all of this. And it feels cooler, so I'm happy to have lost that hair at the moment. Also, I felt like it was getting a bit too, uh, yeah, scabby. So I really want to be able to attack that and let the air get to it. Okay, so I think I'll start by using scissors now. Now this area needs to be styled, I think I should use water as well. So I'll do what I always do when I cut the hairpiece here, which is basically do layers, but this time I'll start right from the very back up here. So that's way too long already, right? So I'll start fairly short back up here. I'll neaten that up again after a second run through. Because I think I should have a shower. I have a shower. Okay, so this is what it looks like straight out of the shower. I can't brush it too roughly, otherwise it'll start pulling away the glue. This is still my French lace custom piece. So the front line is hard enough. The front hairline is hard enough to get looking good with any lace piece. So especially if you, if you come out of the shower and you start brushing it ferociously, look at that big pile up of glue there which probably should be C22'd. And over there in the corner, both those corners. Look at that. Just while it's sort of malleable from the shower, I'll just put some alcohol just there. See if I can comb out that glue from my hairs.
I often do a very messy job in these corners, right where the temples are. This whole area needs to sort of be lifted over and moved to the right. Might just risk doing that now with that. Because there's a one centimetre gap, it's intolerable. So I'm gonna lift that up. See if it'll stick back down. The problem is there's a lot of sweat there at the moment, so maybe I shouldn't. Because I'll be destroying the underside of the glue. Bit of lifting going on there as well. A clump of glue in that hair there. A lot of glue right there as well. See, this doesn't happen with poly. You just, it's, it's all exact. There's no over gluing down. See, look at that. That does not happen with poly. Lace is just so messy, you know what I mean? This whole area here seems to be just swamped in glue right in the corner there. It needs to just be dried there, so hopefully the glue that's still stuck to the bottom of that lace will just press back down, but I doubt it. I'll give it some alcohol to kind of dissolve it slightly. Just make sure there's no glue in that corner there. And inside my bio hairs over here. If I'm lucky, that would just press back down and cure back in enough so it'll be sort of bonded with my scalp. I do feel very sweaty in this room. In this area here, I'm going to peel that up because obviously that's a huge gap. I'm probably going to have to re-glue all that. I really don't like having to deal with lace like this. I 
this gets really messy. And the whole front hairline always tends to shit after a shower as well. You're better off not touching it, but you saw how many mistakes there were with that front hairline in these temples, etc. And I'm sweating as well so much over here that it's not gonna I'm not gonna be able to put it back nicely without regluing it. Careful not to stretch it. See these clumps of glue that have already gone through and they melt in the heat of the body and weather and just penetrate into the top hairs. Another reason for legs and for poly being better. This doesn't happen with poly. Poly does somehow come around the front edge, somehow, at the very front hairline. So you can experience some glue, but nothing at this scale. This is 100 times worse than poly. Let's hope I can stretch that down so that it meets the edge. And also try not to get too much glue in the side of the temples. I'll have to go and sit out in the air conditioning and let this dry. I'm a little sweaty. Look, you can see from my neck how sweaty I am. While I was sitting in the chair, I was just peeling away at some of these extra bits of glue, just absent, absently just picking at it. Got to a bit back here where the glue is fully infused in with the hairs and the whatever. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So this kind of hair loss. Um, from air piece would be uh, critical in a medium light density but because it's medium you can lose a few hairs here and there it doesn't really that matter that much anyway just glue from that point back there a little bit of bump there but it's too hard to get the glue out of lace because it's totally infused upwards into the mesh So I'll glue it in two parts. I'll glue the back bit first down to there and then I'll glue this bit here. Make sure there are none of those. Now I just want to tell you something, this glue here is better than this glue here. This is Dublin Green, this is Walker Tape Ultra Hold. This one is thinner and this one is thicker. All that 
stuff I've been peeling off has been this glue. If it was this glue, it would have been doubly as thick, especially coming out of a shower where the water's had a chance to absorb into the glue. But because I'm going back here first and I've got, I've got to be sparing with this because it's $9.50 American, but $100 shipping for one of these, $109.50 for one of these. That's why I bought six at a time. It was a big bill. These are, when you buy in bulk, $28.50, including delivery. You get four or more. So how would I water this down? Shake it up with a bit of alcohol or something in the bottle. I've tried that and it just went cloudy and it lost its sticky properties. So I don't know how to do that. So Walker Tape Ultra Hold is the most affordable working glue. But if you can, if you do live in the United States and you don't have to worry about international shipping, because America has a very expensive mail system. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just comparing it with China because China, you know how everything's cheap from China. A lot of that has got to do with the uh, shipping costs because the government subsidizes shipping for companies as part of their tax. Their tax helps international trade. That's why they're doing so well, I think. Also, you know, you get 20 people working for $5 a week each, you can get a lot done. I am exaggerating, I hope. See, now I've got to worry about did that go through? Did I push too much glue up against the very bottom of the lace there? Because as you know, you can't get glue through lace. I should have been more careful. Look at all that. I fucking hate lace. Seriously, I hate it. I like the way it blends at the perimeter, but that's about it. I just wanted to have a haircut. I had to do all this as well. So this is the sort of thing I can't do at a hairdresser, isn't it? You understand why it's hard for me to go to a hairdresser? I'll um, neaten some of this up as well, maybe with a 12 millimeter. Lay it over the ears a bit, don't know yet. Maybe I have to shorten some of that as well. We'll see. I broke my glasses, look. <coughs> this bit here, it can still be screwed back in, but I'll have to go back to the optometrist. I don't know if that'll cost a lot of money or whatever. I could have got a second pair of glasses for an extra 300 bucks or whatever, how much it was, but that still seemed like a lot of money. Let's try. Let me get this clot out here. So I'm just glad, even though there are little chunks coming out into the hair, which is bad because when it melts back, it just <laughs> splodges into everything, especially around here on the edges. Um, <clears throat> but at least it's not water-based glue. That's just extremely messy and has no hold whatsoever. People think it does, but those people don't actually sweat. Now I might say they're not human, but I'm more than human because I've got hyperhidrosis as far as I can tell, which means I sweat much more than other people do. Like coming out of the shower, it takes me about an hour or more before I, I'm not wet anymore. And that's around the neck area where I've dried. Somehow my head being different temperature causes me to sweat all over the rest of my body or something like that. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I think it kind of feels normal to me, but other people don't seem to have a problem with it at all. Be genetic. I'm going to try and stretch it across more than was before. Now I've got some slack there without causing overhang or a gap. It 
feels like I've got a line of glue in here somewhere. There are definitely some lumps. But yeah, that join at the edge with lace is just so invisible compared to what it would be if it was poly. So perimeter, lace, hairline, poly. That's the best configuration. You never want to get a hairpiece that's all poly and then lace at the front. That's just doesn't make any sense. I don't know why a hair company would ever make that. It doesn't make any sense at all. And I'm not even staff member of any hair company. And even I know that. It's almost as if the people who are making the hair products don't wear it. <laughs> they just ask somebody just in passing, what do you reckon? Do you reckon it'll be okay to do this? And they go, yeah, sure, why not? And then they do it. That's the end of their reasoning. The person who says, yeah, why not? They should be saying, well, it's not their responsibility because they're just being asked a question. But if they were intelligent, they'd go, no, don't do it that way. Why don't you try it out? Try it out and see if it works. If it doesn't, don't make it that way, obviously. Fuck, I didn't realise it was all still lifting there. All right, fuck it. I'll have to do all of that again. <sighs> Reasonably speaking, I should be plucking all that glue out of there too, so it doesn't have ongoing issues. I think it's glue all over it. Brushes and everything. Don't like it. The finger print grip does give you some, if it's all dry, like it's totally, I've had enough time for this to all dry. This is now wet because of just sweat, it's a bit greasy here, but it's dry enough that I can get some sort of purchase on the glue with my fingerprint, my finger pad, should I say. But yeah, it's a million times harder than with poly. Poly's a lot easier to get it off than this. Because the glue has seeped into the mesh. It's gonna take a while to do this, damn it. I'm tempted to not worry about it because it's kind of become a new type of base, hasn't it? It's become a sort of a quasi poly base now that it's got some glue coverage. But the problem is, as I've shown you in the past, even though I thought I was agreeing with the opposite standpoint, that if you put glue, new glue under old glue, it sort of just becomes a mushy mess and, and doesn't have as much hold. You want as much direct hold as possible. You want hairpiece, glue, scalp. You don't want hairpiece, old glue, all dissolved, new glue, then scalp. It's a bad sandwich, but it's easier for front hairline maintenance, especially given that, for me, most hair pieces only last one month and then I throw them away. But if you are the sort of person who wants to try to see how long you can get this thing to last for so you can save money, you probably would want to go to all this effort and peel all this off. But yeah, I can't be fucked doing all that. It always ends up messy no matter how you, well you do it anyway. I shouldn't say how well. It's just so hard to get it done perfectly with lace that it's not worth your time and effort to try to get it perfect. <sighs> now ideally I would be using tape to mark the front edge so I don't get glue all over my forehead like I just picked off before because secretly I didn't, didn't use the tape for my most recent touch up.
No, I'm not going to bother. But what I will bother to do is using the nicer glue, the Devlin Green glue. This green stuff peels off all of your fingers as well, by the way. Already too empty. See, I want enough glue on this edge that it's going to stay, but then I don't want so much that it's going to get all tangled up in the bio hair. It's too hard to access this glue anymore, so I'm just going to throw this away. Be careful with it, because it's glass. And I'll open another one. Brand new. And I could try to use a lipstick applicator here to try to get this to be less drippy. Because I want to make sure there's not insufficient glue. Because I'm trying to be so cautious as to not get glue on the forehead. But the, lips, the lipstick applicator is not much better than this. See? It's really not much better. So I'll just continue using this. You really do need a nice strong hold at the front here. But then again, you don't want to get glue in the hair and you don't want to have glue on the forehead. It's really hard to Lace is just a nightmare, really. If this was poly, as you know, it would just be gluing directly onto the base itself and it would line up exactly without any trouble whatsoever. You know, I, I even feel like I'm wiping it away with this brush when I do that. I don't want a lump there, but I think I can be a little bit more lenient with the Devlin Green as opposed to the Walker Tape because it is, I'd say, one third of the viscosity of the thickness. So I won't create some giant lump at the front hairline. I don't know where, the, where it's going to land really. It feels like I've come too far down here. The very front center. And I don't know how far that's going to come down either over there. No matter what I do there, that's still going to be residual glue. Piss me off. Yeah, I would never order lace like this if it wasn't COVID. And I just put glue back over where I just removed it as well. I 
I hope all of you are reading the comments from other people in all the videos that I make because that's where really the information's at. People are saying that I got this particular point wrong or whatever else, and I have. They're probably right, and they are right many times. Like, for example, one guy said, I look 58 without the hairpiece and 35 with the hairpiece. So if you're concerned about looking younger, definitely wear a hairpiece instead of choosing baldness. But then again, I wouldn't say to The Rock, you need to do it because he's A, tanned and B, muscly. So therefore, tan, well, shaved head looks fine on, on people with those specifications. I'm gonna clean this up, wait for that to dry. Clean that up as well. I'll go into styling the rest of it after that is finished. Sorry about the delay. Just been playing Red Alert, Command and Conquer Remastered. If you get the EA pack from Steam, about five dollars a month, then you can play hundreds of dollars worth of games. They've got a limited selection, but the games are good enough. Other than that, I just play Risk all the time. Oh shit, look at this, the hairs have actually glued in. Beginning at the end for a hairpiece once you start gluing through the lace. Fucked up. Alright. Not enough glue there, too much glue there. I'm so sick of this. It's my own fault really. I probably just should have used the micro pore tape, the tape marking. There's glue in all of these hairs.
You see, <clears throat> the glue that touches the tape is just as thick as the glue higher up. So I'm not necessarily wiping it away as I would normally do freehand. So the tape is not just good for stopping the forehead getting covered in glue, but also for making sure that you give it a nice thick layer right there at the front. Better not leave my phone stuck with stuff because it's just going to come off. Okay, let us now have a look, shall we? Da is straight line. Let us see if it line up. Aha, uh -huh, she do. Maybe not exactly right there, but press that down a bit. There's a lot of gathering of glue all along here. <sighs> it's the best you can really hope for with uh, lace, unfortunately. Could try to comb all that through with C22, but not gonna. Well, let's look at this hairstyle. We've got some hairs quite long there, but. Yeah, I guess they're the same length there. Okay. Now I guess I'll, um... You can't be bothered doing this. There's probably a big transition between that and that. So I'm gonna have to... blend it. I'm not pressing all the way down, I'm just kind of feeling it. It's good, still got the 18mm guard on it. Could afford to be shorter, couldn't it? But I haven't tried to style it yet, so we'll see after I style it whether or not I need to take off some more. I just ordered, uh, this is pure uh, argan oil. I just ordered two diluted bottles of this that are 150 mils spray version of this. This is just like a oil that comes out in droplets. This is five fluid ounces, which is 89 mils. So the other one will be, this is about 90 mils. So let's say 60 mils more than this. I'll just use some of this wax, which will have a kind of a wet look. I 
I should probably read the instructions about whether or not they want me to put it into towel dried hair or dry hair, wet hair. Never wet hair. Lace gives such a disgusting hairline, doesn't it? Nothing I can do about it. This hair is just so. I had a shower, I, I washed with shampoo twice. Anyway, I think there's glue all through this hair that I can't get out. I need a much, I need triple the size of this bench. It's always covered in shit. But also, three items are too many. I can't see what's going on back here, so... Feels like that's sticking out too much back there. This is where being ambidextrous would come in handy. Anyway, we've got to wait for that to dry before you can see the uniformity between dry bio hair and wet hair piece. 
but this hairstyle would definitely go with more clothes. If I wasn't <coughs> so chubby cheeked, I might consider even shaving, clean shaven. <coughs> I feel like I don't want to shave off these sideburns because it's sort of like my trademark at the moment to have this. And also I've got some sort of scab under here. On the side. I'll just keep trying to make that heal. But also I should take this opportunity to shorten my greys. It's actually a good move for me to cut it short and get used to the idea of doing that because I really want to reduce the wariness of what can happen here on the sides. I'll set this to 15. That's the other direction. What I like about these, this cut, even though I, it doesn't, it's not quite as neat here on the sideburns and everything as I would like, which I could make it neater by cutting it short, is the thing is it looks like I haven't just had a haircut, except for maybe those bits there where they just sort of clump together in exactly the same lengths. So. Try shortening that a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little. We'll go to that nub there. The bottom of the nub, your nub. I don't know if I actually just shortened it, but. I put all that dry skin peeling away there. I've got to be careful though because my fat double chin really makes me look way worse. Bit scraggly still, aren't they? Could make them a bit shorter, but I don't want them to disappear into my face. Try a 12 card. So I don't I don't want to get these bits up here. I just want to reduce that bit. Oh, 
or we should say nine millimeters. So the eyebrow, right eyebrow, has a lot of alopecia or eczema or something going on in there. Don't know what, but you can see the dry skin all through. All right, some some kind of skin disease. Something else is happening in there as well. Not so much on that side or the left eyebrow either. But there's something happening. my scalp. Oh fuck that. You really want to get that um, any hairs you're pulling out you really want to get them first go. It's more and more painful when you take. That's a two and a one, that's too short. Three and six. Try the six. I wouldn't really want to go short than this. Now I don't like that rainbow look that they do when you, they cut the scissors right around to make an arch. Hairdressers do it all the time, it fucking shits me, it looks like crap. So. Seems obvious how to fix that and that, doesn't it? Moisturizer. But it's probably some creature living in there, just digging in there and burrowing out the skin. That's probably what's actually happening. It's always these tiny little microbes or viruses or whatever that live on our skin and in our bodies. They kill us and rips, are trying to eat us all the time. I used to think when you get buried, the body disappears and the skeleton remains because the worms dig through the box and eat your meat off your body after you die. But really what's eating your meat are the creatures that live inside you right now. They're trying to eat you right now, except your immune system is fighting them. But when you die, your immune system dies. And then the creatures that are trying to eat you right now end up having a delicious meal. Which makes you wonder, if they've eaten your quantity of meat, then there should be your quantity of meat in poo form in the coffin next to your skeleton somewhere. But it's just a skeleton, so where did all the poo go? I think what ma ma I heard we're 70% water, so. You don't even have 30% your meat in poo form. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't do much with this uh, used hairpiece hairline and all that gluing and shit really pissed me off. Um, I want to get rid of this hairpiece already. Can't remember how long ago I put it on for the first time, but 
Uh, yeah, all my lace pieces are going to have to be like this. The hairstyle is a bit too neat for my liking. But I think it's just about wearing more compatible clothing. And I don't think I'll keep this moustache. But why not? I never see anyone anyway. People might think I'm an off-duty cop. Might work for me, we'll see. Might get rid of some of this bulk later on, don't know yet. And here. This has got to blend really well. I've just got to make sure that I've got all the all the leniency I need to be able to style it how I wish. So I'm not going to take it off just yet. How does that look? Does, is that is that an obvious difference in length there, where those archways? Or does it look all right? Can make sure it's brushed into position each time otherwise I'll end up with that. If I can just know that that is going to solve the problem it should be okay. You see these grey hairs up here? Oh fuck's sake. I just saw about five of them. I'm going grey all up here and everything. Game over. I probably should have found a wife and had kids by now, but fuck it. I'm gonna go and play uh, Red Alert and live my life to the max at 4 30, 5 40 in the morning. At least it, uh, in three hours' time, I can go down to the post office. It is a Sunday, but one of them will be open. Well, it's a news agent anyway. Let's just hope those colours match in sunlight. That's how you give yourself a haircut. Easy, right?